webinar on aerospace and traceability. My name is Christoph Ebert. I'm the Managing Director of Vector Consulting Services and I'm going to lead you through this webinar. Traceability is a very interesting topic. It's one of the major failure points in many assessment. But let's be positive. Traceability is a really important asset in any project. Why? Because traceability helps us to achieve consistency. Far too often we have late changes and we implement the changes not completely, not consistently, because we overlook something. It's critical when it comes to functional safety, because in functional safety we have always to ensure a complete connection from the HARA and the safety goal into the implementation and the verification and validation. So traceability is extremely important. On the other side, we have seen many projects where companies struggle to make the traceability working efficiently. Of course, we can imagine that traceability can be handled in an Excel table where we maintain all the different relationship between requirements, test cases, documents, but honestly, this is getting out of control. This is getting error prone because nobody in the last minute is going to update the Excel sheet. So what we want to achieve is a good traceability, both in terms of same abstraction level, which is horizontal traceability and different abstraction level, like the requirements to the architecture, to the design, which is vertical traceability. And this different traceability should be implemented efficiently. Let us look into what are our best practices, which we have found in our different vector projects. Now, first, let us get an understanding into what is the benefit, which is available for both parties. I think for the supplier, as I just pointed out, is available that we can see a consistency of the different work products, that we, for instance, have a safety case, which has all the necessary elements related to the initial safety goal, that we are able to cope with changes, that we can keep variants and versions consistent to each other, because we have a kind of a trigger point. If here's a change, then we have to make also changes there. And from a customer, from an OEM perspective, for instance, it's the evidence that whatever we have specified, we receive, it's tested, it's documented, we have a consistent package of what we receive. And this is a key requirement and for that reason, many customers, many OEM explicitly verify the traceability in order to ensure it's adequately documented. Of course, we recommend the use of tools, as I just pointed out, otherwise it is getting really complex and we overlook some important relationship. ASPICE has a lot of relationships or traceability in the model. We see here the typical V model, which is the underlying abstraction, and we have on the upper left side the initial stakeholder requirements. That's what we get from the outside, the market requirements, from which we derive system requirements, which is what is necessary. Then we go to the software requirements. How do we implement? And finally, we go to the design and the units. And you see already a couple of useful traces. We have always to understand how much traceability is necessary because too much makes only things very expensive because we have to maintain traceability. When a company with which we are working would tell us, well, traceability is something which we can do in the beginning of the project when we have enough time or during requirements analysis, but later we cannot anymore maintain it, then our answer is very clear, then you approach it wrong. Either you have too much or you do it inefficiently. Any process should work at any time without saying we do it later. And this is what is really important in this traceability that we manage to keep those traces which really bring us an advantage. Vertically, it means the consistency across system level, software level implementation. Horizontally, it means that we have always some sort of verification, validation, which relates to the requirement. Why? It gives us a simple way to check that we have implemented everything consistently. If you think about agile development, in agile we have burn down charts, we have some sort of completeness, 
but the major completeness, which is what we call definition of done, is that a respective test case is available for necessary functionality. We do not accept any kind of 70% complete. This was in the old days when people would say, oh, I'm almost ready, I'm 90% complete. But honestly, this is like in school. The teacher would ask to the pupils, so how far are you? And they would say, oh, we are almost done. After half an hour, he would ask again, how far are you? Almost done. An hour later, oh, it's just a couple of little small things. That's the same in software. We are almost done. 90% of the time, we are almost done. That's what we call the 90% complete syndrome. We're almost finished. Unfortunately, we have no idea how far we are. Traceability gives us this yardstick. We know how far we are. That is, in school, the pupils would have their records from the exercises and they link it into, I've done this, I've done that, I've done that. Software, same thing. We have a requirement. We write five test cases. If you have tested successfully for the five test cases, for instance, with test-driven development or with test-oriented requirements engineering, then we know that we have really delivered something. Now, from the perspective of pragmatism, of efficiency, it's not only to have the traceability, but to have good enough traceability, not too much. So, simply speaking, we can imagine an Excel sheet, a very simple table, which is we have certain features and we map the features to the customer requirements as the outside perspective. Our system requirements design, maybe code or architecture, and the test case, one or many test cases. But we can see this will not scale. Take a several hundred requirements list, take two, three versions, and take 10 variants. This will not work. So we need this minimum abstraction of the traceability and we need to put it into our requirements tool. This is why we recommend strongly to go with a requirements tool. And this gives us a simple example from a requirements tool. We have here the requirements database. We map it into our architecture with SysML or with um, UML, and we can then directly go to the software components, to the hardware components, the wiring harness, some simulation, etc. So that would mean tools like Prevision, can help us very much in achieving traceability, which are these dashed lines, but maybe more important, keeping the traceability up to date. We make a change somewhere, we can immediately have the trigger points which say, if this is changed downwards in the development lifecycle, upwards we have to make these, these requirements, test case, etc. consistent. Vice versa, our customer is changing a requirement, we have the traceability which say, make change here, make change here, make change here. And this gives us the necessary checkpoint to ensure that we have completeness in our traceability. And with this, we can ensure on the one side that we know exactly where we are, on the other side also that from a product liability perspective, we have not one of these traps as we often see in functional safety that very late in the process, we have not a good picture in terms of did we validate all the safety goals. In other words, traceability is mandatory, especially if you work on any ISO 26262 or similar safety standards, but it also helps with agile development, with a good visibility, with understanding when you are done and in order to achieve consistency. To summarize, we have learned about traceability, we have learned about the concepts of bi-directional traceability, which is a traceability which goes from the source to the target, but also if you make a change in the target, you see what would be the impact on higher abstractions. We learned about horizontal traceability, this is the initial software to the test cases, and vertical traceability, for instance, from a system level to the software level to the implementation. I showed how we can achieve this traceability by means of a simple table structure, but I also emphasized use a modeling tool, a requirements tool, in order to achieve traceability with clear trigger points. So when there is a change, you can also keep things consistent. This being said, I wish you good success with your requirements engineering traceability. Traceability is a real life cycle activity. It will never stop. 
It is something which we have to maintain. Don't do too much traceability. Make a good enough traceability, but one which you can really keep consistent continuously. Thank you very much for listening to our webinar and stay tuned. If you want to have more information, you will find it on www.vector.com/consulting. Thank you and good success in your projects.